acknowledge and thank so many people in your book. But there are two that really stand out, and it's David Reynolds mm -hmm. and, um, and Keith Johnstone. And most of us here know Keith Johnstone. I, I would love to know a little bit, bit more about David sure. and, and the, yeah, mm -hmm. the influence that he's had. Well, it's interesting because I, improv is a, an art form and a theatrical form and a form of play and um, it has a lot of uses. But um, what I needed to take the improv model and turn it into wholeness was, if you will, a, a psychological or a psychological philosophical um, base. And for me, this came from a teacher, a man named Dave Reynolds, who uh, wrote books on um, constructive living, is the trademarked uh, phrase. He was uh, an American anthropologist and psychologist who um, went to Japan and studied Japanese psychologies. You may not even know that Japanese actually have psychologies in the way that we have uh, Freud and whatnot, and behaviorism. Uh, he studied Jap Japanese psychological theory and came back to the States and scratched his head and realized that the, the kernels of truth inside of these theories were things that we needed to hear in the United States. Um, such things as um, um, feelings are uncontrollable directly by our will. We can influence feelings, but we basically can't control a feeling, but we can always control our behavior. Um, I might have a pounding heart, but I can move my legs in the direction of, of, the, of the stage, for example. So as, as improvisers, we know that we can behave and even when not feeling like it. So one of the central tenets of Morita's psychotherapy that Reynolds brought to light was the notion that um, behavior wags the tail of feelings. So why not put our, our attention, if we want to change our lives, if we have problems, not on trying to feel better, but on trying to do the things we need to do in our life. Purpose of behavior was his sort of uh, the sum of bone on the way to mental health. Um, so don't worry about your neurotic feelings. They'll take care of themselves. Just uh, while being neurotic, um, wash the dishes, pay your bills, uh, take care of the things of life. So it was very practical, very pragmatic, um, the Marita side of Reynolds' constructive living teachings. So it was, it was know your purpose, accept your feelings, and accept reality the way it is, and then do what you need to do. It was an attendance of um, part of it. And look at the world with a more realistic eye, and that's the eye that sees what we're receiving from us and the trouble we're causing. So when you take those, those little bits of philosophy and put them together, they, um, Reynolds trademarked his work into something called Constructive Living. There's a little green book, Constructive Living, that has the philosophy. And he's written um, nine or 11 other yeah. books, wonderful books that all, most of them have water in the title. Water Bears in the Scars, Thirsty Swimming in the Lake. I like that. Thirsty Swimming in the Lake is kind of what we all are. Mm -hmm. That's not really seeing the the reality around us, the abundance of care. So um, he, uh, Reynolds came into my life through a book. Books are important. I hope you're all out there writing some. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that in the way that improv changed my life, the, it was actually the first of Reynolds' books was playing ball on running war. Had some ideas that just went, ah, oh, yes, ooh, ooh, this is true. And so um, I sought him out and then went and had, uh, did some training with him in 1987 um, and uh, became a constructive living instructor. And, um, what that means is that I'm willing to uh, talk to people using this uh, educational model of making sense out of your life. And uh, so over the years, I sometimes um, act as a constructive living instructor, and my husband and I. Uh, I couldn't do any of this, by the way, without my brilliant and beautiful and wonderful husband, Ron Manson. Well, we didn't <laughs> takes care of me and um, rubs my feet and I get drunk and stuff like that. <laughs> best husband in the world. Um, so I met him at about the same time I uh, did my constructive living training and together we have, um, we've, he's also a constructive living teacher. And, uh, used to do some trainings and things. And I think there's actually a few other constructive living instructors in the audience because I saw Paul and Chip. Uh, so, um, 
So um, it's a movement, a very small, quiet uh, movement that's not trying to attract much attention, about trying to help people live realistically. And life's too short to waste it on trying to feel good all the time. So, <laughs> what, what I heard in the, in the audience response right there was a little bit of belief, is that my interpretation? There really is a paradigm shift that takes place when you first come into contact with the teachings of constructive living. And, and um, I know when I worked with you, I had a, a, like, some, a lot of blocks. Mm -hmm. a, 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 you called it confused, which is very gracious of you. <laughs> <laughs> what kinds of, uh, I want to say strategies, what kinds of Questions do you ask people to help them through that that block? Uh, if I prefer to see that everyone around me is an asshole, but mm -hmm. I'm just right, what, what would you ask? You know, what, what would you ask me to help me get through that? Well, I'd say, is that working? Is that working? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a question. Because if you've got a, a behavior that you're attached to, or a belief system that you're attached to, I'll say, is it working? And so, if it's working. Go for it. You know, I'm not. I'm. You know. I'm not trying to change it. I don't. I never try to get somebody to believe something. Yeah. On the other hand, if you're sitting here with uh, you got some problems or issues that you'd like to work out, you might want to consider trying this rather than that. So um, one of the ways is to it is also to to uh, appeal to people's um, ability to see reality. Sometimes we don't want to see reality because it's not what we want. Yeah. But we have to look at reality as it is. That's, that's one of the Mayan problems about uh, face the facts. Um, sometimes the scene part that we have on stage isn't a person we, we like, or we like their kind of the way they play. But we still have to make that partner honor them just as much as if we were playing with our favorite improv partner. Mm -hmm. And that's true in, in everything. Um, it, one of the things that to me is um, sidetracking here, most exciting about right now in history is that it, it seems like, knock on wood, that the new administration is, is much more interested in trying to stay in touch with reality, along with all that is going to interfere with that, um, because we've got to keep going back to um, what's real, what, are, what, what makes sense, even when those facts are things we don't like or wish for. Turning a blind eye to reality is the quickest way I know to um, mental illness and unhappiness. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of us do that, even if we're not mentally ill, there are parts of reality we'd rather just um, stiff on. Yeah, I'll think about that tomorrow. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> conversation with you. I was sitting in, in a Keith Johnstone lecture, and he was saying something I've heard him say oh, 30 times. <laughs> and I remember being a little irritated about it. He said, Keith is sometimes wrong and sometimes stupid. <laughs> 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 so, don't tell us how stupid he is. But, uh, <laughs> but I learned that. That I got from my teacher, David Reynolds, because David Reynolds, there was a time when I was studying with him that I, he was sort of like the guru and everything he did and said was, yeah. you know, I, I just, uh, I couldn't see him uh, with his feet on the earth. And he said to me, Patricia, I want you to repeat out loud, David Reynolds is sometimes stupid and sometimes wrong. David Reynolds is sometimes and, and I thought that I'd pass that on because I think that's, we, we all, we're all human. We're all sometimes stupid. Oh, gosh. And a lot of the time. And um, being, being quick to, I, I heard a, a public apology from Obama about his, uh, the, the, he took it on himself about Dashley. He said, I, I made a big mistake. He said, I screwed up. I screwed up. You <laughs> <problem. laughs> Yes, yeah, it's so great. And so I've, I've been longing for a politician who says they're wrong. Yeah. Sometimes it's, it's, it's a great thing. We know that. Mm -hmm.